transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath, for on the day of their Sabbath their fish did come to them openly holding up their heads. But on the day they had no Sabbath, they came not. Thus did we make a trial of them, for they were given to transgression. Here it says God deliberately caused the fish to stay away six days out of the week, but on the Sabbath, when they weren't supposed to fish, the fish were so numerous they came and put their heads out and basically he said, hello, we're here. <laughs> when some of them said, why do ye preach to a people whom God will destroy or visit with a terrible uh, punishment, said the preachers, to discharge our duty to your Lord and perchance they may fear him. When they disregarded the warnings that had been given them, we rescued those who forbade evil, but we visited the wrongdoers with a grievous punishment because they were given to transgression. When in their insolence they transgressed all prohibitions, we said to them, Be ye apes, despised and rejected. Now this is also found uh, in another surah, uh, which I will now turn to you, which is a shorter account, but it is of the same story in which people uh, turned into apes. Here we read in Surah 2, which is one of the early Meccan surahs, and it says, 63, And well ye know those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath, we said to them, Be ye apes despised and rejected. Now you notice, how is the story introduced? By saying, you know this already. Well, you know, you already know about this story of those people who became monkeys. Now this is the reverse of Darwin. Darwin had monkeys becoming men. The Quran has the men becoming monkeys. This is the reverse. Now in the Hadith, this is given further, um, and I give the documentation in my book, a rat ran by, and Muhammad said the Jews turn into rats. So you have people into rats, you have people also in another section into swine, but here we have people into apes, and I want to read to you um, what Yusuf Ali has to say in his footnote, and I'm now reading, there must have been a Jewish tradition about a whole fishing community in a seaside town which persisted in breaking the Sabbath and were turned into apes. That is, this is a reference to something, some kind of story relating to people becoming apes or monkeys that was so well known, it's introduced by saying it is well known and this is something that pre-existed the coming down of the Quran and he properly identifies it indeed as having to do with a Jewish legend, a Jewish story. And this is why I think I'm in good company. That is, when I go through the Quran and I say, well, this is not anything, no, what was the big deal? This was already known, this was already known, this was already known. I'm not in any way doing something that other scholars do not do. Jewish scholars do this. Uh, I have give you the documentation of Jewish scholars who've gone through the Quran very carefully, and they will give you the exact places where this was from the Talmud, this is from the Mishnah, this is from the Midrash, this is from the Book of Abraham, the Pseudepigrapha, the Apocrypha. There are Christian scholars who've gone through the Quran and identified all the youths in the cave, and this, this was a Christian legend, this was a Christian myth. And there are Islamic scholars who go through and identify, well, these stories, yes, this is an old Persian story about the night journey and things of that nature that have been revamped. Two further illustrations, I think, would be of help. The Hajj, and of course, um, is introduced, and you must understand that when it is introduced in the Quran, it is introduced simply by talking about it right out, out of the chute with no big explanation because it is assumed that whoever is reading um, or listening to the Quran 
uh, they certainly would be familiar with what is being discussed. That's why when you turn uh, to the sections of the surah, and if you would turn, those of you who brought your Quran over to Surah 2, uh, and you look at the context of the material, you will find um, that the pilgrimage is something that is introduced not as something new that has been revealed, but indeed as something that is already being uh, observed by the people of Muhammad's time. And in Surah 2, for example, if we begin with the, oh, for the context, um, I think it perhaps would even be better in verse 196, it says, complete the Hajj or the Umrah in the service of Allah. And it goes on to talk about doing a sacrifice, shaving your head, making an offering. A matter of fact, it says for the Hajj, the months are well known. They're already known, you see. Uh, accomplish your holy rites as you used to celebrate the praises of your father. And he talks about during the appointed days. And again, Yusuf Ali in his footnotes points out that this is in reference to the pagan pilgrimage, which at that time was still being uh, uh, observed. Matter of fact, when this command was sent down, the Kabbalah was full of 360 idols. The pagans were running around it seven times. And as he says, when this was revealed, the city of Mecca was still in the hands of the enemies of Islam. So you have uh, an emphasis to complete all the ceremonies connected with the pilgrimage as being, I'll use the words here from verse 197, well known. So that as we are dealing with the Hajj, some people um, don't understand you also have the Hajj after you go. Um, when they're dealing with the pilgrimage, we're not dealing with something that is startling and new, something that is revealed, uh, something that is so shocking to the population uh, that it must be uh, explained to them. And this is why, for example, I have a, a book written by several Islamic scholars, and this is a book all on the pre-Islamic stories and legends as they relate um, to um, Arabia. And it goes through, it gives you a picture. This is one of the daughters of Allah from pre-Islamic times. And it gives you some of the pictures, and then it talks about uh, sacred trees and rocks and and it talks about the major gods and goddesses, the stars. And when it comes to the issues of the rites and pilgrimages observed by the pagans, he starts out by saying the annual pilgrimage to Mecca was the greatest religious festival of the pagan Arabs. And it said once arrived at Mecca, the ceremony started with a ritual walk around the sacred house, followed by uh, a walk uh, to the holiest of the sacred hills of Mecca. Though there the pilgrims congregated in reverence, preparing for the next ritual, the sacrifice. The offering of sacrificial animals to the gods was perhaps the most important ritual for the pagan Arabs. The pilgrimage ended with a last ritual walk between the sacred hills of, and of course, I don't pretend to know Arabic, so if I mispronounce something, do forgive me. Uh, the Safa and the Mahwa, the same hills. Uh, he goes on 